G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Friday's here in Australia, at least Friday evening here, so sort of Friday morning over in the States and other places around the world, and I did something that I don't generally do. I bought crypto on a Friday. It's generally not a good time to buy. There's going to be a weekend retracement, but I just felt these ones were looking pretty good at the moment. So I bought Stellar and I bought Ripple today. Uh, we'll wait and see whether that was a good idea, uh, and especially considering I read this after I bought it. But anyway, what can you do? So Ripple CTO says community could force the company to burn $48 billion worth of XRP. So currently, I think Ripple own or you know hold around about 50-something billion uh, actual coins, not dollars worth. 50 billion actual uh, coins in XRP. And there's a lot of contention over it about you know whether they should have so much and all the rest of it. But basically, uh, there was a little bit of a disagreement between David Schwartz and Jed McCaleb. Now he designed uh, Ripple. He also designed Stella, and Stella ended up burning I think 50 billion of their hundred and something billion coins. There we go. It was 105 billion coins they had, and they burnt 50 billion of them. Uh, and David Swartz was, uh, he said, so too bad XRP is decentralized or someone could just burn half the supply and raise the price to 29 cents. And <laughs> Jeb McCaleb, classy guy he is, and I mean that legitimately, WTF, are you talking about? Ripple Labs can burn half the XR, XRP supply. Uh, and basically, David Schwartz went on to agree that uh, there is circumstances well when that could happen. I mean, look, I don't see XRP burning uh, that much uh, anytime soon. But uh, it's interesting to think that, you know, they say they are decentralized and, and at least moving more towards decentralization. Uh, that whether there could be a, I guess, a bit of a, not so much a coup, but, you know, a vote. And they say, yep, we need to get rid of, you know, basically a majority of those XRP that are being held uh, by Ripple themselves. It would also be very interesting to see what would happen to the price of Ripple if that all of a sudden happened. Uh, and again, there was a lot of conjecture that, you know, Ripple were constantly selling uh, their coins every month. They were releasing, you know, billions of them and selling them uh, and sort of suppressing the price. Uh, they haven't done that for a while now. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, they stopped doing that a while ago, so that almost also may have something to do with the price going up. But I thought that was a pretty interesting story, and you know, got me thinking about. I wonder what would happen to XRP's price if basically half of the coins got burned. I mean, you know, Stella their price rose, you know, significantly anyway. After not initially, at first there was a bit of a panic, but then after a while, uh, they raised pretty quick. So I wonder if that would happen to Ripple. All right. So another crypto skeptic suddenly flips to Bitcoin, but adds a stark warning. All right, so the Bitcoin price has soared since crashing to around $4,000 per Bitcoin in March, climbing to its 2,000 all-time high of around 20,000, but has failed to cross that psychological bar barrier. And look, it has, but it never got to 25,000, uh, 20,000 in 2017. Got round to about 19, sort of four, 19,400, 19,600, depending on which uh, exchange you're looking at, and it has broke that. But it was it just wicked for a very brief time and sort of came back down. So we'll have to wait and see. Now, a top market strategist at the research arm of New York-based global investment manager Alliance Bernstein, which has $631 billion in assets under management, has admitted he's changed his mind about Bitcoin. Every couple of days we hear a story like that. There's somebody new coming out and endorsing Bitcoin. You know, if you aren't already in in my personal opinion, not financial advice, this is the time to get in. The big major players are getting in right now. Even they're changing their mind. So, you know, you are still early. Could you have been earlier? Of course. All of us could have been earlier, except for Satoshi Nakamoto himself. He would have been, he was the earliest. Uh, but, you know, we weren't him and we weren't part of the cyberpunk, uh, you know, sort of scene at that time. So this is as good a time as any. Uh, you know, if you're going to get into something, the upside is exponential compared to the downside. Look, don't get me wrong, you could invest in Bitcoin today, uh, and we'll have a look at the charts soon. Uh, they have gone up significantly, so there is a good chance we have a, a fairly, you know, significant 
uh, retracement sometime soon, but it's not guaranteed. It could still be quite some time away. And look, let's just have a look at the Bitcoin chart now while we're here. This is what the Bitcoin chart has done since, you know, really we can come back to here. So the 7th of October, it's been on quite a run. Now we did have a bit of a pullback there. It was around about, I think, 17% or something like that. So that was reasonable. Uh, not quite what we're used to, you know, the 30, 40% retracements that we see in a bull market. But that may still come. And look, it could come here. We could retrace from here. It's basically here and come all the way down to here, and that's basically a 30% retracement, i.e. $14,000 as well. So this is possible. It's absolutely something that could happen. Will it happen? Probably not, but it's just something we need to keep in the back of our minds. But again, even if we were to retrace this much, in bull runs, Bitcoin has done this numerous times. You know, anywhere from sort of, you know, 25 to sort of 40% retracements, and then after a few sort of weeks to maybe a month, they've just got right back to where they were before and continued to go higher. So there's very little reason to think that this won't happen again. Now, we can't, we can't guarantee it's going to be exactly the same, but history generally rhymes, so it does something fairly similar. Look, time will tell. As we see here, look, somebody thinks Bitcoin uh, could likely take a nosedive towards $14,000. It's possible. But first, it would have to break the 16,500 support level. Look, and we saw that chart just the other day of, you know, where all the whales had got in and things like that, you know, buying zones. And again, there was some around 17,600. There was some around 17,000, 16,500. Definitely down around the $14,000, $13,800 level. And particularly down at sort of, you know, the eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 mark. There was big buying in. So... You know, if you want those 100, you know, 600, 700% gains, you have to be okay with, you know, 40, 50, 60%, you know, retracements uh, along that journey. If you're not, crypto is not for you. You're not going to be ready for those gains because you can't handle those losses. And again, you know, you've got to, you know, if you want to see something that starts down here and goes all the way back up to here, then the chances are you're probably going to see something like this. That's just the way it works. All right, let's go. Let's go and have a look at some trades I did. So, I brought these up the other day, and we'll have a look at Chainlink. This line is still holding, and it's just getting ever so close and so close. And this is just coiling tighter and tighter and tighter. I really do think there's going to be a big move from Chainlink uh, in the very near future. Now, look. Unfortunately, it could be to the downside. We could drop all the way down to here. That could be the move. This upwards, you know, trajectory that it's been on for a very long time could finally break. That's absolutely something that could happen. We need to keep that in the back of our minds. But as they say, the trend is your friend until it's no longer your friend. And then obviously, you know, what can you do? But at the moment, for months, well, actually, not months, we're going a year or two now, 13th of May 2019, every time it has come close to this line and even wicked off it, it has really had a parabolic move. So we got here, it was a bit of an accumulation zone, and right, bang, that parabolic move happened. Took a while to fall down, so what was this? What do we have? 19th of June to... 12th of September, so June, July, August, September. It was a couple of months there, sort of four months. Bang, another sort of parabolic move, traded sideways. So let's say we're gonna to get to about here. So 24th of October to the 7th of January. So these are taking a couple of months at a time, three to four months. And then again, we get here and it does bounce off, nothing too spectacular, up and then a bit of sideways motion, and then bang, we get that next parabolic move. So what have we got here? We hit the top around about the 18th of August. And now we are at 2nd of December. August, September, October, November. Three months. A lot of these are showing something kind of similar. Three to four months for it to come back down before it hits this line. And it does its next parabolic move. Is this what's going to happen? Again, it's not always going to be exactly the same, but history tends to rhyme. 
So I do think this is probably going to start its next parabolic move and Chainlink is probably a pretty pretty good buy. And again, this is against BTC at the moment. The dollar value has been going up for ages. Don't get me wrong. It was a lot higher here and it's come down a bit. But, you know, against BTC, it is now just coiled so tight. Get out of there. Thank you very much. I think it is really ready to make its next move. I do think it's going to find support off this line uh, and it's just going to go to you know new all-time highs again. That's just the trend that's been happening. But if it doesn't, well, make sure you've got your stop losses in and things like that because this could roll over. And if it does, again, we're looking somewhere around about down here. Roughly, this would be you know the average price between all of this, somewhere in down and around here. Let's say 40,000, you know, 500 we'll round it up a little bit 40,500 satoshi somewhere around about there is where you're probably going to find your next level line of support again where it's touched here could be a little bit higher could be a little bit lower we just don't know but at the moment i really do think this is just caught up so tight it's ready to make its next move Ave, and again i made another pretty good call on this one now it was down here sort of when i got into it it was a bit of a fake out I was excited and then it came down. I thought, oh God, this one's going to hurt. Uh, but again, it was a fake out up and it was a fake out down. Pumped back up and I thought, yes, good, and started to fall down again. So I got a little bit worried. I uh, did fall below the, you know, kind of average mean line against Bitcoin. But then it's just started to rally. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, you know, Ave Lend, whatever one you're into, has been one of my best. Uh, performers uh, since I got into it uh, and I'm you know extremely with happy uh, you know, happy with how well it's done I wish I had to put in more unfortunately you know <laughs> I didn't put in uh, enough to you know really make that life-changing wealth that people like to talk about but you know my Ave position lend position it's up around about five six hundred percent so you know can't complain I'm still doing a lot better than uh, what I could have been if I had stayed in regular financial markets but look, the upside of where this might go in at the end of the next bull market, that is very interesting. You know, I could make life-changing wealth, uh, but you know, again, the chances are a little bit less as it was a fairly high, you know, altcoin. And really, things in the top 100 aren't as likely to do the big major moves. Uh, the ones in the much lower caps are, but they're much riskier. And again, particularly anything that's in the top 50 is even less likely to have those big massive moves doesn't mean it's impossible it's just less likely and Aave is in the top 50 I think I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure it is I think it's up in the uh, teens maybe even around the 20 somewhere around there synthetics same thing I was pretty happy I think I've got in somewhere sort of around about here so the dollar value is still doing all right the BTC value is just kind of holding but again fake out drop below thought it was gonna go real low not finally broke out of this downwards trend line now it's traveling sideways and even down a little bit and it may come back down and retest this line before it bounces again. We'll just have to wait and see. But against the BTC, uh, uh, against Bitcoin, I think it's generally doing all right. All right, Ren. Oh, like Chainlink, just getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter, but at least it has bumped up and stayed above this uh, trend line, which is good. I was worried that it was going to go below and it sort of did but it was a bit of a fake instead of a fake out to the upside it was a fake out to the downside you know maybe squeezed out some shorts and all the rest of it and now it's starting to move up and we're just waiting to see what's going to happen and, and you know i said it in the other one it is possible it goes down it's something we've got to keep in the back of our mind but this has been in an uptrend for a while we are in a bull market i like ren i believe it's a great project I think this is going to get ready to make another move to the upside. But look, it could come up here and bounce off. You know, we can extend these lines out a little bit longer and, you know, maybe they sort of meet up around about here. So, you know, this could kind of stretch out until around about Christmas, thereabouts. A little bit before, a little bit after, you know, we don't know. But I think in the not too distant future, i.e. kind of the next, you know, two to sort of three weeks, we should know what Ren's doing, whether it's going to fall down and roll over or break out to the upside. All right, last but not least, let's give this a bit of a refresh. $585 billion. Has it gone up or down? It is Friday. 
stayed around about the same there you go you know traditionally there's a sell-off over the weekend but it's not every weekend although bitcoin has kind of been doing that for a while so you know hopefully my uh, xrp and stellar buyers uh, you know don't do so bad but we can see in the last hour it's already down so you know who knows but long term i'm confident that they'll do well so you know if we see some downside that's all right gas prices uh 36 not great not awesome just look kind of steady uh 61 percent for uh bitcoin dominance uh and you know that's to be expected that's just really the level that it's been kind of hanging around for quite some time let's have a look 24 uh 24 hours all right made safe moving nem has been on an absolute tear i was planning on getting some nem uh nem uh and i am really kicking myself uh, I'm definitely going to hold uh, until there's a pullback. And look, there may not be a pullback sometimes. That's just the way it goes. This could go up to like 100% before, you know, there's another pullback. And then that pullback may only be another 40%. So we'll have to wait and see. But good on them. Bitcoin SV. All right, interesting. Not completely dead in the water yet. There's people thinking about it and getting in. Theta Network, Cycoin, Oceans, you know, there we go, Ren, uh, making a bit of a move. But again, this is against the US dollar, it's not against Bitcoin. So even though it looks like it's just kind of flatlining against Bitcoin back over here, USD value continues to go up. So it really, you know, I like to take the perspective from both. You know, if it's not gaining against Bitcoin, as long as it's gaining in the US dollar value, then I'm not really too worried. Uh, Algorand, nice, uh, starting to make some moves. Right, what about losses? Is there anyone who's really kind of hit the straps to the downside? Nothing too bad. So Elrond, again, you know, of course it was going to pull back. It had this great pump. So I expect it to probably pull back a little bit more and maybe sort of come back and test somewhere down around about there. I don't know exactly where that is, but, you know, it had a, a great bull run. So uh, it'll probably lose, you know, maybe half of it. Now, Sushi, of course it was going to lose some. Again, it, same thing, it had this big pump. And then we could see Decred, you know, went straight up there and now is coming back down. Uh, not sure what's going on with Decred. That uh, actually looks like a bit of a sort of pump and dump. That's the kind of pattern that pump and dumps have. Uh, this is more, you know, just a bit of euphoria from people. But look, nothing too bad. There's two that are at 10% losses over the 24 hours, but they've had good gains. So that's to be expected. Uh, and the rest, just kind of single digits, are uh, Verge. Um, you know, again, Virgil was down like 30%. So now I'm only down like maybe two, 3%. Uh, so I'm hoping that what I have left over in Verge, uh, you know, does well in the future. So yeah, interesting. All right, Friday's upon us. Beware of that sort of weekend retracement. I don't expect it to be anything sort of crazy. But look, again, we go back to these charts. It is quite possible that it is something crazy. You know, this is pretty steep. So the possibility that this just rolls over and falls back down here and tests, you know, again, maybe something like this around about here. So let's say roughly 16,000. Well, again, maybe even that 14,000. Definitely possible. And that would be, you know, just uh, Bitcoin history repeating itself. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. And I'll see you next time.